All right, on today's episode, we're gonna be working on the cooling system. Um, if you watched the previous event event video, then you then you know that I was having some overheating problems. I think most people were having this problem anyways, but I like to try to improve upon it and make it to where we can hot lap the car um, all day long and not have any cooling problems. Um, Cause you could definitely tell when it was getting hot. Um, it, the car just sounded different. You could feel the heat just radiating off of the exhaust onto the bottom of the car and they would just bake you. And then you could just feel, feel the power difference a little bit. So I like to, to shore this problem up and, and just keep the engine as cool as possible. Cause that's, what's going to make this thing last as long as, it, as long as possible. So we still have the, the Griffin up here in the front, right? So, um, what I decided to do is um, put, let me show you real quick, put a second Griffin radiator back here. Um, we're going to run some AN lines. I had um, a friend cut off the inlet and outlet and then weld on a AN bug on there and then also a cap right here um, to get rid of the original radiator cap because um, I don't want this thing uh, pressurizing and, and then the cap lifting and stuff like that so um, I made sure that this is not the highest point in the system uh, it's about two or three inches lower than the and this will all be covered there'll be a firewall in here um, that's the reason I'm putting it back here just in case um, something does go wrong and there is a firewall so it's, it'll be safer because it's not your primary cooling system it's kind of a secondary it's just kind of help limp the primary along um, it doesn't need crazy amount of vents but what we're probably going to do is we're probably going to take this bash bar off and then what I want to do is probably cut some eight inch holes right here and then put on two fans right there just to draw the air out and i think it'll look pretty dope too so the thing we have to do is so we're going to tap into the um the heater core line so what i'll do is i'll drain all the coolant out take these off and then uh get these nipples out of there and then uh tap it and then um we'll run a n line all the way back to the back so um, one it's going to add a bunch of capacity so i think just just in the line itself we calculated out as almost an extra gallon of coolant or water um and then i don't know what the radiator holds um so it's probably two to three gallons more for the system and then um yeah i think it'll it'll improve it a lot so we're gonna we're gonna get working on that <laughs> we're gonna get working on that i can't cut a perfectly straight hole by hand so what i'm gonna do is i built this little would it be like a compass, I guess? So basically you put, so that, that'll be three and a half, four, four and a half, five, all right, five inches. So basically you put your plasma torch in this cup here, and then you should be able to basically um, rotate on a, on a, and make a perfect circle. Hopefully, we'll see how it goes, but. So I want to get that out of the way first before I start tearing into, into this.
my little compass didn't really work out the way I wanted it to, um, but it's it's not that bad. I'll just clean it up with the grinder, and uh, and the reason is because it's not a flat surface. So if it was a flat surface, it probably would have cut. Um, probably would have cut it just fine. Like down here in the bottom section, probably where it cut the best. So, um, yeah. So I'm gonna just clean it up with the clean it up with the grinder real quick. And see how it comes out. <laughs> the two fan holes cut out right here kind of the reason that I wanted to to cut these out first is because I also needed to get to this back wall right here um because I want to run the lines through there um <clears throat> and then like around the fuel tank and then kind of where they're protected so you can kind of see up in there I want to aim for about right in this spot somewhere but it looks like it's going to be harder than I thought So I, uh, I've already plumbed, well not plumbed the lines, but I ran the lines under the car, just makeshift. Uh, oh, I'm just putting on the AM fittings right now. Uh, since I don't have the right stuff, I'm going to try to do this without scarring these fittings up too much. Typically uh, there's uh, special Special wrenches for this that are made out of aluminum. Um, so I don't have none of those. But. Yeah, that's probably good. Uh, well, screwed them up a little bit, but not that bad. All right. Well, <clears throat> I'll kind of show you where we're at on this one so far. Um, we have the holes cut right there for the fans. Uh, I still need to go to Summit and grab those. And then, so we have the lines all hooked up right there. And I made a little tab. You can see it right over there. Boom, right there. So we got the lines routed up to here. Um, but. I got, I think I'm done working on it for the day. So this is where we're at right now. I cut the holes and then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put this fan there and then another one there and uh, we'll wire it up to a uh, thermal switch. And then that way, once that radiator gets up to about 160, it'll uh, kick on and start pulling pulling air out. So I'm going to make one more bracket for the other side. So we'll get that knocked out real quick. Pretty much there. 
just need to take it all back apart take the taillights off scuff it and then get ready to paint it and it'll look good <laughs> Look at this. That is starting, starting to look amazing. We just got to, um, I don't have it right now, but we got to wire in a, a temperature switch with a relay um, to these fans. So that way uh, they only kick on when they're needed or whatever. But yeah, this is looking, it's looking pretty good. So pretty stoked on it. So. I think it I think it'll look really good once the bass bar is on there and then you know the offset of the black and the teal make it really I think pop. So let's get back to work. Basically, I just gotta take this hose off real quick. And, wow, that's That's the trick, I think, right there. Put a little divot right there, just to relieve the pressure, whatever. It seemed to be the ticket, and then it just wiggled right out. So cool. Let's see if that worked. I have like the worst vice grips in the history of the world. Oh, we're gonna have to try. All right, I'm gonna use a half inch by 14 MPT um, national pipe thread um, tap on this side uh, on the bigger hole and then a 3 8 by 18 MPT die on the other side, or not die, tap. But, Yeah. 
I figured if, if we're going to go in here with a tap, we might hit the thermostat. So that's why I want to take it out. I have to take it out anyways, because uh, all the metal shavings will be back in there. That's nice. Right into the bucket. Feels like it's going in straight. Hopefully it is. All right, so now that I have all the lines hooked up, um, this one goes back to the radiator, and then the return line uh, comes up right here, goes into this T, and then back down, goes into back into the water pump on the inlet side. Um, and then this, this tank just catches uh, anything from the, the steam vent hose right here, feeds into this, um, swirl tank and then the swirl tank anything all the fluid goes back into the system back into the water pump right there um, this just kind of separates the the coolant from air so and that's it so I'm done with this part we're gonna move on all right all right so we went to summit and we got some some parts we got the thermal switch and relay. Um, so I got that there. This is the, the temp that's your sensor for the um, fan switch. So the problem that I'm having is that this right here, the outside diameter of this is slightly bigger than the outside diameter of there. I went, this is basically going to go in where the um, pet cock goes. So, what I'm going to do is probably chuck this up in the in a drill, and then use like a file and try to turn this this section down. Um, it don't have to go down very much. It's only off like just a just a little bit. So, yeah. Not too bad for a poor man's lathe. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Boom. See it uh, screws in there. So. There, see? Boop. Screws in, so. Oh, it should be fine. Let's go see if it fits. Alright. Goes in there like this. Yeah, so yeah, we're just using the drain cock uh, port, put that sensor in, and then that should control the fans. And we'll run our, hook up our relay and do all that, and then uh, a couple more plumbing things, and then we're done. So the next thing we gotta do is wire in this, uh, this relay and fan switch, so get working on that. All right, so I'm pretty much done for the night. I finished up um, the wiring. Um, tested it uh, the fans do work um, couldn't test the thermal switch though uh, because the car doesn't get hot enough um, so I'll test that in the morning uh, when it when it gets warmer uh, we'll see see how she works um, it did pull quite a bit of heat out of it but 
we'll see. Um, so tomorrow we'll get that tested. We'll back it out and, and try to get it warmed up pretty good. But for tonight, I'm done. It's 12 o'clock at night. I'm super dirty. It's time to go take a shower. So, all right. We called it a night last night, so ran out of time. We got to uh, move this out and try to get it up to operating temperature so we can um, test the fans and see if they're going to kick on. Um, so I thought the sensor, the thermal switch was for 160. It's actually like 185 and then shuts off at 170 or 175. Um, so I want to see if uh, just sitting in the driveway, if it'll get up to like 190 and see if it'll kick on. If not, um, I guess that's a good thing, but um, last night the highest I could get it was like 181 and that was it. So we'll see what it does outside in the heat idling. So, and last night it got late and I didn't want to be running the car and stuff because the kid was sleeping and the wife was sleeping. So, um, all right, we'll get working on that. So in an attempt to get it to raise the temperature because it got up to about 180 and it would not move off of that number. Um, so I unplugged the radiator and then put the, the hood back on it. Let's see. It's starting to go up a little bit. We're at 189. So let's see. Should be kicking on soon. Probably a temperature difference from the the front to the rear. Well. Wow. All right. Well, they came on. So uh, the temp gauge says it's 210. So that's when they're coming on. Uh, based on the temp gauge, the temp gauge is not really accurate. But we'll see if it's enough to. Maybe it just maintain temperature without the front fan. All right, so we pretty much are done with it for now. Um, I put the panels back in uh, temporarily, closed this up, ran it. Uh, the highest it would get was um, 210, and then about at that temperature the rear fans would would kick on and then it would cool down to like 200 205 somewhere in there um so they are helping we had to do a, quite a bit to get it to get hot in order for those to kick on um which is a good thing i guess i'm not gonna really mess with it we'll um we'll test it we'll test it at the the next event uh we're gonna head to utah so that'll be in two weeks from now so i got a bunch of prep to do on on the car all right so i think that's it for this episode um thanks for watching or uh please like and subscribe um let me let me know in the comments if if you uh if you like what i did or what i'm doing with this channel so uh just let me know down in the comments all right we appreciate it thank you bye